yeah, it's going to be really explosive if they do get to pick something up, up like that troll here. It also plays in with the storm quite nicely. Again, they know that really, really Lisa wants to pop off by mid game. So there's enough time there for a troll to go greedier, try to build up a little bit more Ooh. and farm. They go with the Ursa instead, which is another here that's going to be hard to lock in, especially since you've got Enrage on top of the Aphotic Shield that the Abaddon can toss out. You've got some good heals coming in tr through the Ursa now as well. And this is a really strong way of starting out for Dog Champ. There's not much room for Ego Boys to look for a counter in terms of supports. Uh, Nyx can kind of hold him down early on. CM as well with Root, but it's not ideal. These heroes are very squishy as well. So the Ursa might be able to just rip through them in the back line if you're not careful. And it just sets up Dog Champ to have that same timing that they want. But the troll does come out for Ego Boys. And in this case, Dog Champ does not have great control for the troll at all. They have Lift, they have Vortex from the Storm. That's it. So there's there's a lot the troll can do here in terms of just running up and maybe even trying to fight the Ursa with his own ult up, you know, just getting that rage off. He might be able to win that out if he lasts a bit longer. It's a weird back and forth. Like, you build up stacks in the Troll, you also build up stacks in the Ursa. But the Troll has that invulnerability period where he doesn't die. There, there might be enough there from Ego Boys to just wipe this Ursa if they get to build up enough in the Troll. And they're still following that very kind of early game to mid game style draft here with Ego Boys. Like, if, if they win their lanes out, this could be a very, very quick game. Uh, just based off what they've already drafted. I'm not sure what they're going to finish off with here. It does seem like they are lacking some kind of off-lane pick for Ego Boys. You wouldn't mind something with a bit more push just to add on to that in case you do get the momentum your way in this game, number one. You don't really have the Prophet. You don't have the Beastmaster. Those are the big ones. You could go for something a little bit cheeky like an off-lane Lycan here. Uh, it doesn't really offer you much in the way of team fight though, which does scare me a little bit. And of course, up against the Ursa, it can be pretty rough uh, to try and lane against. Unless you wanted to switch lanes up and put like a, an aggressive tri lane with the Troll, Tiny, and uh, or rather Troll, Nyx, Assassin, and CM. Uh, but I doubt it. I guess the Lycan's probably not going to be a good pick here. Uh, considering it just, it makes it a bit too hard and maybe it's a bit too greedy. But if they wanted to finish the game real quick, you know, it's one of those heroes, John. That it is. They could opt for it. We have seen Lycan on the off lane go for Ags. Always fun to watch. I think <laughs> Dog Champ has has that opportunity to emulate that draft though. Like uh, Ursa plus Ursa plus Lycan, uh, Fuzzy Wuzzy turning into a wolf. Free <laughs> swipes with a jump. Uh, that that is pretty silly. If Dog Champ does want to experiment, but that would be greedy with a storm on top. So it's it's a bit of yeah. a greedy closer for both sides if they do opt for it. Lots of the off laners taken out here as well. So both sides are limited in choice. Maybe Dog Champ, I think for them, they could eye something like the Underlord. Same thing goes for Eagle Boys. Either side could really go for that. Eagle Boys, if they do pick it up, you've got the Root with Pit of Malice, which ruins the Storm. And then you've got the follow-up from your next CM and Tiny. And it's fairly, you know, selfless as an offlaner. It just finds farm and lane. Sometimes dips into the jungle quite fast. So that could be something Eagle Boys use to tie up their draft and to maybe get some additional control onto Ray Lisa Storm. Yeah, my only problem with the Underlord, while it does control the Storm well, is I don't think it's going to lane well up against Troll or Ursa. Mm. Uh, that could be the, the rough side of things if the, one of these teams did go down that route. So instead, Ego Boys, they're going to go into more team fight. Stuns are never bad in Dota. And Sand King will be a nice offlaner there up against Dog Champ. Uh, I'd say the Sand King should be fairly safe. Like, you've got a way to get out with Burrow Strike. Sandstorm does make it pretty darn hard to kill him off. But if you do get some sentries down... You can harass him away and waste that Sandstorm. But most of the time, you are still going to have the Burrow Strike available to just kind of break the gap and get away from that Ursa. I think this is a, a pretty safe Sand King pick up here for Ego Boys. Dog Champ. Whoa, Ooh, they go for the Razor. Yes. That's, that's pretty genius right there. Up against the Troll Warlord. It really shuts down the draft of Ego Boys. How do you that fight into an Ursa throughout the... Uh, excuse me. How do you fight into a Razor as Troll Warlord throughout the mid game? It's... Mm. It's a very ugly situation now with that Razor up against them. It's difficult. At the least, Dog Champ doesn't have much in terms of team fight. So that's something you boys can abuse. Just avoid being left alone. Try to rush those level 6s on your supports, on your off lane, and play with that spike you have. Play around a cooldown of Epicenter. Jump in. 
catch dog champ out they cannot do much in big team fights they just don't have control unless yarn gets some good spell steals on the rubik so it's all banking on the rubik getting some big spells to steal out otherwise when it comes to a 5v5 there's not much presence early on from dog champ have a, to have a lot of items on hand to maximize that so ego boys can try to secure that early start for themselves get the levels up and then run down dog champ before they get any farm up that's going to be the game plan here dog champ side they're going to try to hold those lanes steady razor plus rubik is going to be hellish for that troll like you get the lift up you get some a lot of free static link damage from the toss back as well and that is going to make it hard for the troll to find farm so rises is going to have a challenging lane to say the least but we'll see how he handles it. Uh, very different draft once more from both of these teams, but it does make for a very interesting game. No, certainly does. Get into it, John. Game number one between Ego, Bo Ego Boys and Team Dog Champ. Let's see how this one pans out. Overall, John, before we officially start the game, better draft in your opinion? Hmm. It's hard to gauge. I'd say Dog Champ has the answer for the troll, but it just worries me if these fights break out and Yarn does not get a good spell to steal in terms of control. They have none. Like they have Lift, and I guess you could count Chris of Avernus as a silence there, and maybe the Vortex, but it's all single target. And it just makes it really hard to stop Ego Boys from just running in. Like, look at this. They're grouped up as five. Remember, they have stunts on basically every hero can try to find these kills early on. No, I mean, this is the way to play it. They'll invade the triangle, they'll hold the high ground for a bit, but they understand that somebody must have run up north. Luki, shouldn't be expecting this. Nice warding there, and, well, Dismar now gonna find him out into the impel, and that's gonna be a nice, easy kill. There's no way Luki gets out of this one. That'll be the first blood going over to Dismar on the Nyx Assassin. Of course, they'll be able to get the two bounty runes up towards the top lane and alone. <laughs> I, I guess they, you know, they were talking quite friendly in the uh, in the lobby, so they must be friends. And the tip goes over to Luki Luki. Yeah, just to let them know how friendly they are. And that start <laughs> is already pretty darn good here for his blood coming their way. They are just going to trade two for two in bounties, as Dog Champ are not taking chances securing that bot set. So no bounty rune advantage for Ego Boys, but first blood is more than enough to get that ball rolling. Still, we're going to see the lane spread out. Luki Luki is up top, of course, in that offlane Razor, along with Yarin on the Rubik. And Luki Luki did have to opt for level 1 Plasma Field. So he's not going to have that static link to harass with early on. Just going to try to clear the creep wave out first. They are up against Rises on the Troll and Kara on the Crystal Maiden, which is a solid enough lane, but you do have to worry about the static link just giving you so much value on Luki. However, without it right now, Luki is a bit vulnerable. That he is. It's a lot of damage with that plasma field. I think Rises should be perfectly fine here, at least for now. We'll have a look at the other lanes while we have a chance. Of course, mid lane, Raina Lisa up against Alone. I think it's a pretty even kind of trading lane. Alone obviously going to have the advantage in the earlier levels, considering he does have the tree grab, but... As the levels go up for Raina Lisa, I don't think he's going to struggle too much up against this tiny. Nah, he's got some decent wave clear as well with the Remnant and the Overload. Now that he's at level 2, so it should be steady enough for him to build up that farm. A lot of pressure on both of these mids though to take control of those runes. And that's where the Tiny, I think, shines a little bit more. When you clump up like that, it's easier to find kills. So the Bloody Nine... Gets a salve off in time. Dizma is, of course, going to just cancel that salve off. But now Creep's going to try and turn back around. Need the Nyx Assassin B as Dismar still looking for a nice impel attempt and does land one. Does he have the damage? Needs one more, but is not going to be able to reach. Bloody Nine, however, only has one Tango left. Is his courier yeah, coming this... out? Looks like it is. He's bringing a cell. Yeah, this lane's really hard to hold with dual melee up against Sand King, up against Nyx. The Nyx just has so much regen on hand. It's hard to trade favorably. Like, Bloody Nine is tanky, but Nyx can just kind of sit through those hits. And now, Bloody Nine. Double stun. Bloody Nine, still alive. Gets the Aphotic Shield. And Creep gonna jump in to make sure they can't continue the chase. Even Bloody Nine threatening with the Aphotic Shield damage. Will continue to survive. And does get his self off the Courier. 
will have to expend it on himself though. But it won't matter, at least it keeps him in the lane. Yes, he doesn't have any additional source of regen though. So he's still in danger if he does drop low, but Dismar now is out of mana. So Nyx can't actually trade favorably against that Abaddon and Tano. Next time. They're trying to go. No real kill potential without the uh, the Earth Shock. Well, maybe now they can go back in onto Tano. Doesn't have mana for the Burrow Strike. Creep may not believe his eyes as the Orb of Venom is going to keep Tano slowed up, but he's going to be able to get the Sandstorm off. And he gets salved up as well by Dismar. Be able to stick around in this lane. Creep, gonna enjoy the free space for now, and even cancels off the tail end of that self. And now he has no sandstorm nor the mana for it, so he's gonna be very cautious. Yeah, it's a scary spot for both sides. Bloody Nine is still out of regen, whereas you don't have the mana to really abuse that now on the side of Eagle Voice. Overall, an even start down bot. Down mid, though, Ray Luisa was being dived a bit. Oh, nice Vortex alone. Has gone a bit too far, it seems, as he should drop, and Raider Lisa able to turn around and kill the Tiny. <laughs> and Bloody Nine will be sure to return the tip to alone. Yeah, and this is just a free kill for Raider Lisa. Good attempt under the tower, but you cannot underestimate a storm with a value point in the Vortex. And now Raider Lisa gets to farm up a lot more, gets to secure the power rune as well, as the Tiny will have to TP in, but it is bot. So rather unfortunate for Raider Lisa. Rises almost manages to take down Yaren on the Rubik. Ara, meanwhile, actually Ooh. goes down to the plasma field damage of Luki. Rises will not get anything out of that whatsoever. You've got to be careful with that static link. You, you just can't fight into the Razor anymore. You've just got to accept no. the fact that you've got to farm in this lane. Meanwhile, bot lane, creep. Gets Tano as well on the Sand King, but a nice impel is out from Dismar. He at least gets the Abaddon as a trade, but... Definitely favorable there for Dog Champ. Yeah, I mean, they find the core for the support. The kill goes onto Creep as well, so it's a big pickup for our Ursa. And you're setting yourself up well down bot. Creep has had a better time in comparison to Rises in terms of just getting additional denies out, getting that kill up now. And this lane is just set to get a little bit better as well. I mean, the Sand King is still a potent threat. The double stun is still something to watch out for. But now that Bloody Nine is level 3, with level 2 Aphotic Shield, Diving in with all those stunts doesn't necessarily mean a kill because they're so tanky now. Uh-oh. Tano. Should be fine. Isma goes back in for an impale on Bloody Nine. Actually the one to get caught out. They, du they did dust up the Sand King, but they just didn't have the follow-up for it. Creep had to back off because he was low in HP. Stupendous. I feel very nice for Ego Boys. Yeah. Just not getting that shield off means you're not as tanky old though. Power. Yeah, there's no way. Surely. Can't get out of this one. But the oh. whirling axes. Oh, the miss on Luki Luki's attack. Will allow the CM to survive. And while that happened, bot lane creep does end up dying to Tana, or rather alone, who did rotate on the tiny. And now he's rotating up towards the top lane. He was able to get down to the bot lane with a haste rune. He wants to try and see if he can pick up this Razor. Yeah, that's going to be a big kill. Not much mana left in Luki Luki here. He's in trouble. Static Link is going to fly out onto Rises, but the Avalanche Pass does not care about that Static Link. He will die. Kara may go down, or maybe not, but the zip in from Ray Lisa will be enough to at least get the CM. Can he really find any more? Vortex going to be out onto alone once again on the tiny. He's copying a lot of damage, but the avalanche oh. toss turnaround is going to be enough, and he walks out of there. Just on the edge for alone, surviving on roughly 50 HP. That's going to hurt for Ray Lisa. That's going to set him back by a ton. He had a free lane for a long time. He comes in to try and help. He gets punished instead. Look at alone. He's just rushing his blink dagger next, and he's at 1.6k in the bank. That's going to be a very fast blink on the Tiny, much earlier than this Orchid for Ray Lalisa. And that's going to be the major spike Ego Boys plays around with. They're just going to run around, try to get some burst damage off. They've got level 6 up on Dismar as well, so you have to watch the Vendetta place on top of all of that. And speaking of, he does pop the Vendetta now. He seems to be somewhat aware that the next Assassin might be Invis. Yeah, they've got the sentry down. He at least scout that out. A 
That's a Dismar. First Vendetta, probably not going to lead to anything. They rotate though. They have vision over Ray Lalisa. They know where the storm is right now. You've got alone just around the corner. And there's the gap break from Dismar into the impel. He does land all of it. And there's your avalanche and tree toss. Very, very nice. Making the best of it out of a bad situation there for the Nyx Assassin. Even gets a D ward on the way out. Yeah, lots of value for that rotation on this one. They're hitting their spikes. I mean, Ray Lelisa just wants to clear out some stacks, isn't able to do so. At the least, Yarin denies a regen rune, but that could cost his life if he's not careful. It's going to cost his life. Maybe a bit too early on the voice line there from Yarin. Bloody Nine, however, at least does secure a kill on Titano down the bot lane, so they get something for their trouble, but for now, a 5 to 9 with a 1k net worth lead. It definitely feels like it's favoring Ego Boy. Ego Boys quite a bit. I mean, maybe you look at the Trolls farm and you argue that Ryzers isn't farming that well, but you consider the fact that he's up against a Razor. It doesn't feel like Luki Luki's had enough impact on this Razor to really justify the pick here. No, you're definitely not. It's still going to be impactful as the game goes on, but considering the timings Ego Boys are meeting elsewhere, it's a bit of an issue that this troll is kind of ahead of your Ursa. Like, Creep's having a really rough time down bot now, and Ryzus is finding even more last hits. The blink is up now as well for Alone. So it's time for Dismar and Alone to just run together. They smoke up, they've got Vendetta ready. None of these heroes will survive a straight-on gank like this. This is a great timing here. Poor Ego boys as they move down towards the bot lane where Creep is unsuspectedly just farming up and the avalanche boss is going to fly through and he's probably going to be asking why alone has a blink dagger up already <laughs> it's not going to matter though he will already die it's uh it's going to be tough with this early blink timing for sure yeah it's uh not quite lining up with what ray lilisa wants his orchid is still about 900 800 gold away so still a lot of saving up to do on the storm and even with the orchid Man, it's just so hard when the Nyx is just this far ahead. Level 7 already, roaming around the jungle. We've seen him kill Ray Lelisa before. Spike Carapace can just break you down while you're farming. You're not truly safe, and there are only so many sentries you can drop at this point in the game to protect your storm. Smart. Oh, look at this bait. Ray Lelisa gonna go for it, but the impale did not come out fast enough. I think what he really wanted to do was get the Impale off first and then pick up the Haste Rune, but it doesn't really matter too much. He does force back the Storm and gets a nice deep ward out into the Triangle. This Haste Rune may still lead to a kill as well. You see Alone moving his way in, but there are a lot of heroes around. Luki Luki, gonna scout out for the team. Stunned up by the Spy Carapace. And it looks like this side of Ego Boys want to defend this top tier 1 tower. Yeah, it's uh, just trying the numbers up there to prevent the push. It does look like they are breaking up now. They send the Ursa back bot to get some farm. Not really finding anything up top. So Ego Boys will be forced to break off as well. A good scan though, finding where Alone is, but they can't really maximize that. Ray Lelisa is still saving up again for that Orchid. Not quite close to it yet. And could be in a spot of trouble up top. This more is still sticking around. Is level 8. Vendetta going to be back up in about 5 seconds. They do have two sentries watching the lane. So it should be harder to get that Nyx rotation in. Should be. Bloody Nine now just going to front line for the team. He has that level 6. So he does have the borrowed time up and running. And the defense for that top T1 tower should officially be over now. Dog Champ will just go ahead and clear it out. Looks like Ego Boys have just accepted the fact that they aren't going to be able to defend this any longer. The problem is though, they're not finding a trade. The mid T1, it takes a little bit of damage, but not really that much. And the bot T1 is still fairly healthy as well. Looks like they are going to try and dedicate themselves to this mid T1 tower. Tano right now, right next to Yaren. Korea, Blink is up on Tano as well. And they're going to go straight for the Rubik. Frostbite is there, Avalanche tossed to fly out. He's going to try and buy a bit of time with the Sandstorm, but it is not going to work. And so you've got double blinks up now on the Sand King and Tiny. And that means they can just keep roaming and keep finding kills, but Ray Lisa on the side trying to go after Dismar, but he's been stunned up and the Avalanche toss will come in from alone to clean him up. 
very, very bad news here for Dog Champ. Yeah, it's not lining up well. Alone even has this arcane unit running. He goes in. Ooh. Borrowed time. Gonna be procced. It's kind of like a bit of a, a future investment, right? You proc the borrowed time now. Next time you see Bloody Nine, you're probably just going to be able to kill him. And Alone did just spot him out for a second. So Bloody Nine Man. is going to be just fine. As they found Creep instead. Enrage. Toss back, however, into the neutral camp. Creep. Still going to try and run, and Alone does not have enough control. Ray Lisa is still going to rotate onto Rises. They're going to try and take down the Troll Warlord. He doesn't have mana for the Battle Trance, and he can't get the Stick Charges off. Epicenter, Borrow oh. Strike is out. They've caught out Yaren on the Rubik. They'll get one. Ray Lisa, he'll also die. And so, in the end, it still kind of works out. As they got the Storm and the Rubik for the Troll. Not all too bad at all for uh, the Ego Boys. Even alone now, going after Luki Luki. But he didn't have enough mana for the toss back. No matter though, he'll be safe. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of aggression on the map, and it's all paying off in a big way for Ego Boys. Bloody Nine still has borrowed time. Should be right. Impale, just way off the mark. Alone, toss him back. Luki Luki gonna try and zone them out with the plasma field. And so that might be enough, but Alone might turn around. He's salving up. Meanwhile, Tano with the Burrow Strike kills off Bloody Nine. And now Luki, he's by himself. Nobody's around to help him. But it looks like the fear of somebody being around is going to be enough for them to back. Yeah, it's uh, a pretty bad trade still for Eagle Boys to find a freebie. Dog Champ, don't really get anything out of it. So it, it's getting... B bad to worse here for Dog Champ. They're not lagging too far behind in farm, though. That's the one blessing. It's a 1k lead for Ego Boys. They're still waiting on the Battle Fury for Rises. The same thing goes here for Creep. In fact, both of these cores are within 100 gold of each other. So, all things considered, not as bad as you'd expect for Dog Champ, as Ray Lulisa does have that Orchid now at the 14 and a half minute mark. So, the Storm can be a bit more aggressive as well. Static link there, temporarily on Dizma, but alone. Happy to just jump in with an Avalanche Toss and. Does a lot of damage, but not quite enough to finish him off. Onto Yaren, but there'll be no follow-up. Yaren even with the Spike Carapace. He's going to stun up Tano. You know, all things said and done as well, John. It's less than a 1k net worth lead. So, it's really not looking that bad. As you look over to that Storm Spirit. He is top of the net worth board right now. and We know very well, these Storms can carry games very easily. Oh, yeah. Slow. Finds Yaren. Spike oh, Carapace the again. Spike Carapace. Gonna stun him up into the double limb. They still catch Creep, however, and they are gonna get Yaren anyway. They still got what they came for. So it won't what? really matter. Kara, that's the second bounty with a shovel. I've never seen that. What is that? Not in a row, but within two minutes of each other. That's just ridiculous. Why doesn't that ever happen in my games? Uh, <laughs> Every time I dig, I either get the uh, the little creeper, I get a cell. Bloody Nine gonna jump in. Rayla Lisa will do the same. They're gonna try and fight this one out. Alone trying to rush for the double damage. Does manage to pick it up, but they've lost Dizma. That'll be enough. Yeah, it's a big streak going the way of Rayla Lisa, and that is his Orchid reveal. So that's one way to take control of the mix. If he shows up first, silence him up. Can't get his stuns off. You find that kill easy as a storm. They are keeping it even in terms of net worth, 7 to 17, less than 1k lead, still going the way of Ego Boys. The Battle Furies have flown out, Rises has his, so does Creep. So this is where the true farming battle begins. Still within 100 gold of each other here, Mike. Gonna have to wait and see who reaches that BKB first. It's looking like Creep for now, unless he gets caught out in a bad position. Still, they could start Roche now, and they are. Bloody Nine just tanking Roche for now. Yeah. But that jump in was under reward, so this is something Eagle Boys are aware of. Thing is, Luki Luki, he dies down a bot lane, so it took a bit, a bit of time for that to happen. They've got the Curse of Avernus as well, which speeds this up, and there's your bro time popping now for Bloody Nine. The Roshan is still not dead, but it's getting close. Alone gonna jump in for an avalanche and creep. He got the Aegis, but how do you get out? He's gonna try and Earth Shock out of the Roshan pit, and he's gonna make it. Or maybe not oh, the toss. toss into Rises. They get one Aegis life. 
They've lost Kara in the process, but Creep, he is surrounded. He could not get to the high ground either. He's going to try and fight, but it will not pan out. And Yaren, well, he's an unfortunate victim as well. As even Tano now has found the storm. Ray Lisa had a bit more mana to go. He's going to make it. Still a pretty bad set of events there for Dog Chat. Yeah, and you're having issues with your city. Have this really good ward coming out on the side of Dog Champ, just spotting Garush attempt. And that's not a ward spot you tend to check for early on, but very heads up play from Eagle Voice, understanding that was the play for Dog Champ. So if they get the punishment off, they have a 2k lead now on their side. Ray Lilisa is still number one in that worth and does have his Kaya up and can help with some of the damage coming in. But until the BKB is up for creep, I don't think you're ever going to feel safe with your Ursa, and even the BKB for Luki Luki is going to have to up the up as well. Nice little zip in from Ray Lilisa. We'll kill off the Nyx, but it's going to cost him his own life. Avalanche toss. Or well, maybe it's not. He does manage to zip out in time, but alone has a haste rune and wants to keep chasing. Or maybe he shouldn't have. He'll go on a run. Toss, Yaren. Bring Bloody Nine in. They get the Curse of Avernus proc, but it isn't going to matter. And not only does Ray Lisa have the Kaya, John, he has the Fairy's Trinket. So, he's, uh... Oh, yes. That, that kind of explains why he can zip so far 18 minutes into the game and then zip right back out without getting punished that hard. Very, very lucky item there for Ray Lisa. Yeah, that tends to make or break a Storm's game. Ray Lisa is just being enabled by this very nice neutral pickup and... He is finding the right target. He's prioritizing this next for the Orchid. That's exactly what he needs to do to prevent himself getting shafted by the, uh, by the Spike character. So as long as the Nyx shows on the map out of, out of Vendetta, you're never really safe. This more has to be aware of that. Although Bloody Nine... Yeah, I mean, he's got borrowed time, but he might just be dead anyway. I've got borrowed time used up. Mules him up, toss him back, and they just kill him off. Nice easy one there for Ego Boys. The dog chap on the brighter side, I mean, all things considered, they are still holding onto that mid tier 1 tower. So Ego Boys aren't really able to take full map control without that going down. And they'll just keep smoking up and keep trying to apply pressure. They'll go again into that mid lane. Luki being used up here by Tano. Fire Strike as well, and they should have permanent stuns out. Luki just can't do anything, but Ray Lisa in the backside has caught out the troll, but it's not going to be enough. He gets the battle trance off in time. He's going to rush forward onto that Ursa. The enrage is there, but a great burrow strike out from Tano. Landing on two, but is it going to be enough? They've lost Rises, but Ooh. another great stun is there. They do get Ray Lisa and Creep. Tano, he's just not stopping. Not to Yaren. They found the Rubik, and they will kill the Rubik. Full team wipe. Oh yeah, just a messy fight for Dog Champ. It looked good when they managed to avoid away, but they forced the issue. Ray Lisa this time around ran out of mana. The stun range was there for Tano, and it, it's just very difficult for Dog Champ to take control in any way, shape, or form up against five heroes. If this is the one weakness of your lineup, they don't have as many stuns as Eagle Voice, and a lot of it relies on Rubik stealing a really nice spell. He can't get that every single time. There's, there's no control coming out from Luki Luki. There's no control coming out from Bloody Nine. They only really have Vortex and Lift to really re depend on, and that is just simply not enough when Eagle Boys drags five their bodies down to find these kills. No, it is not. Luki just trying to work towards that BKB on the Razor. Just needs a recipe, but he may get ganked in that mid lane. Creep trying to do the exact same thing on the Ursa. He's a bit further away than Luki is. The saving grace is still Ray Lisa on the Storm, but he has dropped quite a bit in that net worth graph. Currently sitting at fourth place. All three cores of Ego Boys sitting at the top. Yeah. You're seeing a difference now between Creep and and Rises. Rises just has so much more presence in the middle of these fights. Has his BKB first, so he wins that farm war, and BKB up on the troll with a Battle Fury means that all of the control, what little control Dog Champ has, is now null and void. And Rises should be able to just stand there, 
get his damage out and just not be worried about anything at all. They do apply some pressure on the bot tier 2. There's a smoke around here from Eagle Boys, though. Well, that happens. Straight through to the mid lane. They know Yaren's there because he's got the Sandstorm, but they'd rather go into the triangle if they can and find Creep. Oh, Creep is going to run back the other way. That is not the way you want to go, sir. Epicenter and Burrow Strike going to be committed straight onto the Ursa. And he's already enraged. No way out of this, surely. Bloody Nine going to try and save him alone. Going to be on the high ground waiting. The Burrow Strike is going to be enough anyway. Meanwhile, Yaren also being chased by Rises is set to die on this Rubik. And Bloody Nine is also being chased on the western side of the map. And John, there's just so many stuns from Ego Boys. You get hit by one stun and you can't move. Yeah, and there, there's just no counterplay for Dog Champ to do anything. If you get the lift, and that's fine. Although, looky looky. Yeah, I mean, he's going to try for the TP, but guess what, John? There's another stun. <laughs> Who would have it's, guessed? It's legitimately uh, just a matter of you land Burrow Strike, I can guarantee that person's never moving. Pretty much. Like, it's not even just Burrow Strike. Like, if you get the root off first in the CM, if you get Impale, if you get one tick of Avalanche, just one tick, then you are just stuck there forever. So, so much to worry about here You've in Dog Champ. They need these BKBs. Of course you do. On right, the troll, well, yeah. and He's getting one, though. It's almost done. It, it's almost there, and that's just too much to handle. Dog Champ, they need these BKBs. They need Creep to get that space to farm his up. It's just he doesn't have that space. Borrowed time, gonna save Bloody Nine. It's Abaddon. As much as he's trying, it, he's kind of being toyed with this game. So we are gonna have a quick pause. Alone's found himself a regen rune, which means they can go for a big team fight and get a free reset for Alone. 10k deficit for Dog Champ. It's starting to look very, very difficult for them to come back. Now, they do still have a draft that can scale better than Ego Boys, but it is going to be a matter of just holding on and trying to buy as much time to farm up. And even then, you are still going to have to be somewhat concerned about the control that <laughs> Ego Boys have, even when you do have those BKBs up. Once the duration runs out, you're kind of just screwed. Yeah, it's... It's a lot of follow-up once a BKB starts ticking down. And even that point you made about scaling better into late game, they need a lot of farm to hit that point. Like, Ray Lelise has got some pretty darn good farm. Still number three in net worth, keeping up with alone. So the Storm is still up there, has the Bloodstone up. Going to be the BKB next after the Power Treads. And once you have the BKB, Storm can kind of hold its own. Issue of control still stands. So that means we have to wait for Storm Axe. Although Tano... He's been caught out, but Alone just jumps right in, and there goes Bloody Nine. Just disappears up in the air. The Enrage does nothing as they just yules him up, but Ray Lisa, no, the stun immediately from the Spike Carapace. Ray Lisa, he's going to be okay to zip out, but Creep, he does not have the same option. It rises, he lets them know about it. Yeah, it's just so uh... dominant. It's tricky now for Dog Champ. 10 to 33, 11k lead. Once they lose these outer towers, you're not going to have safe spots to farm in, at least for the Ursa. Ray Lulisa will probably always have a spot to be in, and you can always just go for these zip plays as well to try to de shove the wave. But that uh, Basher is now up for a troll, so when it comes down to the fight, even if the BKB somehow appears here for Creep, he's just never safe, and there's just no spot in the map where they can truly just sit back and build up. Luki Luki does have his BKB as well. So there might be a couple off of options coming in where, you know, Eagle Boys don't expect that spell immunity. I just I just wonder about the follow-up control on Eagle Boys and the, the uh, on Dog Champs. And, like, yeah, they don't get stunned up, but they don't really stun and control and burst any of those other heroes as well. Rises. It's a bloody nine. He has borrowed time this time. Does pop it. Now Ray Lelisa to jump in, but again, the control is just way too much. He has no BKB. He can't fight like that. Luki Luki trying to fight with his own BKB, but it does nothing. He lets him run away, but that's pretty much it. And Bloody Nine, how could we forget? <laughs> Alone certainly didn't. He's tiny, John. 15, 1, and 16. Yep. More than half the kills. In fact, all of the kills 
nearly all the kills were on him now. Yep, yeah. yeah, Lukey, Lukey. Make that 16 kills for the Tiny. I mean, that means he's been participating in, what, 32 out of 36 kills? 16-1-16. Basically, almost every single pickoff has been off the back of Falone, and his mid lane just went way too well for Ray Luisa to handle. And, yeah, you just gotta be careful now. Like, we saw Luki Luki get a long duration uh, linked off. It's just not enough damage. Oh, there goes Yaren. See you later, Yaren. Rises will take that one on the troll. Straight into that tier 2 top tail, and that's gonna be very easy pickings for them, and... Roshan's gonna be up in about a minute, so they could just hold this triangle and just wait it out. Of course, alone can't really wait. He wants to go for more kills, but he is gonna miss out on the kill that was available down at the bot lane. But like I said, I, I imagine they just go for the Roshan. Once you have the Aegis up, you can go straight for the high ground. And I I'm sure they understand that Dog Champ can't really fight back up against an Aegis troll. They could no. fight right now, though, if they ran into Rises and Kara, but they won't see them in Rises. He actually spots them out first. <laughs> Luki's trying to run. He's being stalked right now by Dismar. Into the Epi, but he gets the BKB off in time. Tano's going to have to go for Bloody Nine, and Creep is going to try and turn around onto the Sand King, but there's no dust. Instead, they'll go into Dismar. They're going to find one. The Nyx Assassin is down, but alone kills off Luki Luki. Onto Bloody Nine they go. He has no borrowed time left. Tano going to be focused in by Creep, but Creep is kind of screwed now as he gets tossed up. Pops the Enrage, is still trying for the Sand King, but he's just getting so many stuns out onto that Ursa. And that's Creep gone. Raider Lisa trying to get the CM and does do so, but it costs you your own life. Yeah, it's, it's messy now. 12 to 40 for the side of Eagle Voice. Yarn alone. Alone knows he's no. somewhere. Not gonna Not catch this him. Time. Not this time. But alone. 18 1 18, Mike. 36 out of 40 now. For the tiny. Uh, this is just such a phenomenal game for Alone. They've got the Abyssal up on Rises and they're into that Roshan pit. Aegis plus cheese ready to go. And you can't deal with one life on the troll, you can't deal with two, you can't deal with a second life in the tiny. Uh, it, it's just a difficult game for Dog Champ to play, and even on the high ground, their defense is just not amazing. They've got this disarm now for the Ursa or the Storm, so just zipping in, trying to get some damage off with the Overload. It's not going to be that, that easy anymore for Ray Lisa. He doesn't have any defensive item up, items up. He's trying to save for his Ags, but even that's going to be a long way off, and there's just not enough space for Dog Champ to try to grow here. Kara, maybe caught. He has Dismar around. Dismar, ready with the Spine Carapace, does stun up the Ursa into a triple oh. impale, but Creep does juke it out with the Earth Shot. In they go, Raid and Lisa are gonna zip in, trying to go after the Nyx, and they blow up one, but now Rises with the Battle Trance, trying to pop the Storm. He isn't gonna be able to finish him off, but they'll go onto the Ursa. Creep is trying to survive with the Enrage. He is gonna be all right for now. Meanwhile, Yaren dies. Will they controlling there? It is gonna be Luki Luki. Creep also dies on the Ursa. There goes Luki. Ray Lisa, he's trying to help out. Trying to help Bloody Nine survive, but there's no way in hell. And Yaren, they, they never forget Yaren. No. That's a 4 4 1 trade. Dog Champ at least finding the Nyx, but not much else. And they lose everyone else for that. Ray Lisa lives true. He gets one charge on his Bloodstone, so. That's nice. <laughs> That's Not enough to turn the tide. You've got the Daedalus flying out here for alone, which is fun, but you have to remember he has what? What's his attack speed at? Uh, 3.21 seconds per attack. So he doesn't have anything to boost that up beyond the Echo Saber, which means not probably going to have to get lucky with a crit in the first two hits. Not going to stop them from the high ground push. They still hold the Aegis. You know what would solve that attack speed problem, John? A swift link. Oh, an Agonim Scepter. Trevolt. Ah, yes, of course. The Ags. We'll see. That would be pretty sweet if Alone goes back into that. My favorite build. Too bad we don't have a Morphling this game. Ah, That'd yes. Be balanced. People in uh, North America <laughs> probably aren't aware of the beauty of the Morphling Tiny with the double tree volley. It was, uh, uh. It was a beautiful thing to behold, John. It really was. <laughs>
It's a long it's time disgusting. ago now. Disgusting. That was all the way back in some Chinese league. I forget which one now. Still. No, it wasn't a TNC. Game on hand. No, 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 no. It was uh, Eclipse versus right, Team right, Serenity, right. you think? All the way back. Bloody nine. Caught out on the Abaddon. Impel going to be out. Oh my god. Ooh, crit the true. No false promise. Yikes. <laughs> Just true to, true to boundary. <laughs> I mean, no false promise. I, mean, I think you meant borrowed time, but it, either oh, way, yeah. I, I get your point. It's, uh, it's a lot of damage. Yikes. Right through the HP threshold. It always feels good if you manage to kill someone through the threshold, though. And I'm sure, uh, well, 21 to 21, 118 for Alone. He must be feeling fantastic this game. Taking complete control. I, are they just going to wait for the next rush? I mean, it's still a long ways off. They still have ages. They could just play now, really. N not much to wait for. I think they're just very confident. Uh, this more. <laughs> Look at that. Wookie, no idea what's happening. Spy Carapace, Avalanche, Impale. Wookie had no idea. Uh, they're just bullying them now. 28k lead, 13 to 47, Dog Champ. And they're trying. Ray Lisa's still saving up for that Ags. It's just he's only got enough gold for one part and doesn't have even enough for the buyback. So it's a dicey spot to even commit for just buying one part out on the storm as it does feel like they need to prepare themselves for a bit of a push onto the high ground soon. We get the bottom tier one tower, so a bit of a golden flux there for the dog champ. But now they jump straight into the high ground where they have caught out Yaren. Yaren's gone. Into the racks they go, in fact, oh. a great avalanche out from alone, but he's not going to be able to get a toss back. Great Elisa, trying to clear out the creep wave. Tano does not land with the burrow strike. Look at the Lucas, uh, rather Lotus Orb up now on Tano. So you can just purge off that silence as Luki. He's going to jump in with the Lotus Orb, going to return the damage back Rise's way. They do go onto that Ursa. He's in big, big trouble. The Embodied Shield going to save his life, but for how long? Rises is willing to just mad fight this Ursa and does end up winning out. They call the GG. They have had enough of this torture. In Ego Boys, that is a very convincing game one victory. Yeah, they play perfectly there. Ego Boys just getting really big on alone alone just delivering a spectacular performance mid with that poor tiny getting that blink up so early on getting the rotations out uh Ray lisa was keep keeping up for a while but it just wasn't matching the pace that we were seeing from the tiny and you always have to be aware of that burst the alt stun lineup for ego boys does pay off dog champ just didn't have control the last pick razor to tunnel vision into the troll didn't look like the response. Like, sure, you get static link off, but then you've got four stuns to worry about from these people with lots of magic damage, and you only have lift and vortex. It was just not enough from the side of Dog Champ. No, it certainly wasn't, John, but we'll see what they change up in game number two, which should be starting in roughly 10 minutes. It's MLP Dota on Gen X Fire. We'll see you all again very, very soon for our second game draft.